certain that this is working. I always have issues. Hello, welcome to the stream. Just getting set up here. Double check this. Okay, that's going good. Okay, welcome everybody. Tonight we we're not doing the temperature blanket. Um, like I said, that's reserved for Sundays and Tuesdays. Thursdays, as of now. We're doing what I call Stitch Stitch Dictionary. And I'm going to be using from this book, and when I switch over to the next screen, you'll see it better. Um, this is a book called Crochet Stitch Dictionary by Sarah Hazel. I'm not sponsored by, by her or her or the publisher com publishing company. Um, I just find it a good resource for um, lots of very interesting, cool looking stitches and uh, easy to read and easy to follow diagrams. So I strongly suggest if you want a basic, easy to use book with a lot of different stitches and you want to venture out past your basic single, double, triple, triple, half double, those stitches, I would strongly suggest getting uh, this a copy of this book. So we're going to get right into it. And again, there's that's what it looks like. It's called Crochet Stitch Dictionary by Sarah Hazel. Tonight we are doing something called the alternate stitch and this is what the alternate stitch looks like it's very similar to single crochet but it's a slight variation it's all actually made up of single crochets but it's how you you put them together and it's a very easy stitch to do very easy i figured starting out with this we need to do an easy one, nothing complicated, nothing like a, a berry stitch or a, a loop stitch or a spike stitch. Those are more complicated. So we're going to zoom in. And get a good idea of what our stitch pattern looks like. And if you're, I don't have a, I should have an example of single crochet. And I should have been prepared. Let me get my sample real quick. It's in here. That's a good, actually, is this a good sample? These are good samples. Oh, I got a new follower. Thank you. Oh, Black Winter Day. I know Black Winter Day. Thank you for the follow. Okay, we're going, actually, we're going to use this, and I think that's roughly an equivalent. This here is a sample of single crochet, regular, ordinary, basic, run-of-the-mill, single crochet. This is the alternate stitch. 
So if you look them, look by look at them side by side. I know there's kind of a glare. That's a little bit better. You can kind of see a slight difference. The single crochet, they're lined up more, somewhat vertical. The alternate stitch kind of has like a a V shaped or a like a meandering type pattern to it. So I'll show you how to make this. We're gonna use some pink yarn this time. No orange, no gray, no sad green, but bright pink. We need a little more light. So to do this, you're gonna chain an odd number of stitches. Since I'm only demonstrating with, with the stitches, I'm not making an actual project. It's not like we're doing the temperature blanket. We have an ongoing project. This is just to demonstrate the stitch. So I'm going to do 20. So basic chain, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and we need an odd number, so we're going to go twenty-one. So that's our little sample. This here is 20 stitches, or 21, I should say, 21 chains. So it's gonna be the same size. So what we're gonna do, and we're not worried about stitching in, in the back loops of the chain. I'm not gonna, this isn't gonna be a finished project. So we're just gonna do basic ordinary stitching to the chain. We're going to single crochet into that first I mean, not in the first, into the third chain from the hook. And I need to zoom in a little bit more. So the third chain, we're just going to do a single crochet. Okay. We're going to skip a chain. And in the next chain, we'll do a single crochet. And then that same chain, another single crochet. We're gonna skip the next chain, and then the following chain, we'll do a single crochet, and another single crochet into that same chain. So you're kind of making little Vs, if that kind of makes a little bit of sense. You've got a single crochet and a single crochet, they're both going into the one chain. But in between those clusters of those two single crochets, you're skipping a chain. You're not doing any chain stitches in that row when you make it. You're just doing two singles into one chain. So again, we're skipping the next chain, and in the following chain, we're doing two singles. That's all there is to this. Skip one and in the next one do two separate into that chain. Skip one in the next one do two singles. Skip one the next one do two singles. If anybody's new here, feel free to um, interact in the chat if you want to. I know when you first follow, I think there's like a 10 minute waiting period that you can't send messages. But anybody else who's viewing or whatever, if you've been a, long, um, a previous follower, you know the drill. Feel free to interact. I enjoy that interacting in that banter. So we're going to skip the next chain and in the next chain we're going to do two single crochets. We're getting near the end. So we're going to skip a chain and do two single crochets in your very last chain which is the first chain you made when you made the chain. So let me show you. That's, oops, 
That's what it's going to look like. doesn't look like much. Now, at the when you get to the end of the row, you're going to chain two. That's your turning chain. One, two. Flip your work. I got to look up one thing real quick. Just to double check. Okay. Double check. So you're going to... What you made, so that's your turning chain, but right here is a single crochet right next to it. You're going to skip that single crochet, and in the next stitch, you're going to do two singles. You're going to skip the next stitch, and in the following stitch, do two singles. That's your pattern. Skip a stitch. So that's our next stitch. Skip that. In the next one, you're going to do two singles. Skip a stitch. And in the next, two singles. It's very repetitive. But that's how you get this, I don't know what you would call it. it it's woven, kind of woven looking. It makes a little bit of a dense fabric, but not too dense. This yarn also is a little bit, um, it's got some body to it. I mean, it's a worsted weight, so it's not going to drape a whole lot. It's not like it's a real fine yarn, but it's not a real solid stiff fabric that you're making. So we're going to skip the next stitch, and then the following do two. Skip, and then the next do two. So on. Real simple, easy pattern. Let me move my sample out of the way. So that was one, and I did two. And we chained 20, and we added one extra. So when we do this, you're actually doing a total of 20 stitches, in my case 20, if you're going to do shorter or longer. So basically, whatever your, the amount of stitches, the amount of chains that you did originally, plus one. So your original um, chain that's how many individual single crochets are going to go in there because you're doing two in a stitch, skipping one. So if you ever are concerned about it being, you're, you think you're increasing or de decreasing, just count. If you know you've done 20 with an extra chain, turning chain, because again, you need an odd number, um, just make certain you got that same count. I mess up I might have messed up everyone messes up so let me let me check I think I counted wrong I think I went into the wrong stitch so we're gonna rip that out beauty of crochet is when you make a mistake you rip it out and we're gonna redo that row chain two flip okay I started wrong let me double check something let me just count okay Yeah, we're going to go in this first chain here and do two, and then we'll skip and do two. It wasn't a big deal. I could have ended up doing a slip stitch and fudging it. But if you get the book, it is in the book. It's actually... 
Let me check this. It's actually stitch number 13 in the book on page 40. Again, I'm not sponsored. I'm not getting anything. At the end of the first row, do I single crochet in the last chain? No. In the last chain, you do two singles. So your starting chain, when you go back, the very first chain that you did, which is the last chain you come to, you're going to do two singles. You always do two singles into the chain. No problem. And with any crochet, the first couple rows aren't much, but when you start working it up, you'll see how it's going to turn. So do two chains. Because normally if you're going to do single crochet, you chain one and then turn. This one you're doing two because you're going every other stitch. Just double check something. Two. And you're going to skip. Do two. That's all this stitch is. There's no. The only chains you do are at the, at the end. You get to the end of a row. There's no chain inside the row. There's no other. No other type of type of stitch except for single crochet. When you get to the end of the row, you should have two stitches like I have here. And then that last stitch, you'll do two. And then you chain two, flip, repeat the pattern over again. You're going to skip that first, that first one here. And do two, skip, do two, skip, so on and so on. I could see this stitch being used. Thank you, Grammy. I could see this stitch being used in a scarf because it's somewhat dense, but it's not too dense. And it would provide some warmth. I mean... I guess you can use it in a, a lot of a lot of things. It's not super decorative. So it's not like it's going to be open and lacy. So it's more of a definitely going to have some warmth to it if you use it in app in an application like a scarf or a um Okay, I was just looking at this wrong. Um, so here, you get to the, get two. There will be a turning chain. You're not going to go into that turning chain. So these two here, the, this here on the far end, are my two chains that I turned when I did when I did the previous row. You're not going into that. You have two single crochets. You only go into the actual crochet. So we're going to skip one and then go in to those two. If that's making any sense, let me take a little drink.
do this again. Chain two, flip, you're skipping that first single crochet, and then two in the next. Repeat. Is this showing up well enough on camera? I know it's kind of... Light's a little blinding. But opposed to, and I showed you on the gray, but I can show you the white here is regular single crochet. No, that's okay. That's okay, no problem. And if you want, if this is easy enough, this, is, this isn't anything major, I can rip this out and start all over, especially for people who've been here and need a refresher. So, we've got our single crochet. This is just a sample I always have. These are my sample for my gate to, to show gauge. We're not talking about gauge tonight. Um, but single crochet looks, they look more uniform where they're pretty much lined up. What did, what, what did I do? What do I mean, what did I do? This here, this stitch definitely has a different look to it. I think it's going to show up better in the gray. It's a little more light. So, again, our single crochet compared to the alternate stitch. It's a subtle difference, but I think you can kind of see what it looks like. So, for those who are now showing up, because I know Clay Mika would, might be interested, I'm going to rip this out and start over. Again, I'm not making anything specific. It's called the alternate stitch. As in like on the alternative or you alternate back and forth. So we're gonna start over and this is good practice even for me. And like I was telling previously, it's from this, from the book, Crochet Stitch Dic Dictionary by Sarah H H Hazel. Is that her name? Sarah Hazel. And again, I'm not sponsored. I'm just like that book. So we're gonna start over. So again, you're gonna crochet, I mean not, not crochet, you're gonna chain an odd number. I'm doing 21. Do whatever you need for whatever whatever your project calls for. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and one more. Twenty one. It's an odd number. Or a lot of patterns say multiple of two, add one. That's still an odd number. That math I can do. So what you're gonna do, the third chain from the hook to so right where my thumb is in that third chain you're going to do two single crochets into the same chain so one and in that same chain do two you're going to skip a chain and in the next chain you'll do two it's all single crochets with the exception of your turning chains Skip a chain, the next chain, do two. And you 
just keep doing that until you get to your end. And since you're doing every other one, you're doing two in it, you're still going to have end up having, in my case, 20 stitches. Skip a chain in the next one. Do two. Same thing. You just keep going until you get to the very end. And with me, crocheting tight, it twists. But if you if you know anything about crochet and you keep doing it, it will flatten out as you go. Or something I could learn to do is to be to crochet a little a little looser, but I think that's that ship has sailed. Every other chain you do two. And if you count it, if you count it right, your very last chain right here, when you get to it, well, when you get here, you'll have one that you're gonna skip, and then you'll have your very last chain. So you should have an even number when you get closer. And in that last chain, you're going to do two. Get to the end of the row, you're going to chain two, flip your work. You're going to skip the, fir the first single crochet which is right here, you're gonna skip that, and then the next one do two. Skip the next stitch, and then the next, the one after that, so the second one. Yeah, it looks a little chunkier. Um, basically, if you think of it this way, you've got, think of the grid here as each of these squares as a single crochet. But this row, you got two of them going into one, but you're skipping this. So then these two go into here, and these two go, and so on. So they're the stitches together are forming like a V. It's kind of like a, in a sense, it's kind of like a, a it's a cluster of stitches. It's just a cluster of two. So you skip one, and then the following, following one you do two. Skip, and then the next one you do two. So it alternates between the stitches. And again, no chains, no half doubles, no doubles, no slips, none of that. It's just single crochet. Basic. And like I said earlier, I wanted to pick a stitch for the first stream of the Stitch Dictionary um, to be a basic stitch. So I get to the end, I'm going to have two. Yes. You could do the same thing, and actually, let me take a look at the, um, I think there's one, I forgot the name of it also, I think they have one called, uh, it's not double V, yeah, I forgot the name of it, it's, it's probably in here also. But yeah, you could do the exact same thing with double crochets. You can do the same thing with triple, with the half double, with triple, which, again, triple's not really something you're going to use. Yes, we will get to the popcorn stitch later on, maybe in the next few weeks or so. I wanted to start with a very basic decorative stitch. I didn't want to get too advanced. Problem with popcorn stitch, it uses up a lot of yarn. So again, you get to the end, you're all the very last stitch, you're gonna have two stitches in it. 
And you get to the end, after you make those two stitches, chain two, flip, and when you do this, you're gonna skip the very first stitch, and then the second one, do two. It's just all, it's every other one. This way, you don't really have to count. And there's no increasing, no just decreasing. If you know how to count between one and two, you're good. So it's starting to form. I'm gonna do a few rows and I'll compare it to the, the, the gray sample I have. Again, we're here at the end. One thing I want to point out, we got a stitch here and a stitch here. Those are single crochets, but at the far, far end is our turning chain from the previous row. I like the popcorn stitch. And there's variations on it. You could do the whole thing in popcorn, or you could do it here and there with... So you could do like a bunch of singles and doubles, and then here and there, do a popcorn stitch. And it's similar to the berry stitch. They're very, they're common. Basically, they, it sits higher up off, off the fabric. It's, it's a dimensional. And you could do different patterns with it. You could make floral patterns with just those popcorn little bumps that stick up. But back to this. We've got, we've come to the end, we've got two single crochets, but at the far end we have our chains from when we start from the re previous row. We're not gonna do anything with those chains. We're not going into that space, we're not going into the chains. We're only going into the single crochets. Do that, chain two, flip, Skip the first stitch, which is right here, which is right there. Yes, it would be good for a baby hat because it's a little bit denser than a single crochet because you're, you're forcing the stitches together. So that, that would provide some warmth. So you're going to skip. Well, you could keep, if you want to do a winter in Minnesota, that's all on you. So you're going to skip the first and then do two and so on. Skip, then do two. Real, real simple. Now keep in mind, with these stitches that I'm going to be showing, um, you can always incorporate this stitch. Okay, here I'm at the end again. Let me see if I can show you. Single, single, and then we have our chain. We don't do anything with our chains. We only do the singles. So you can incorporate, do a couple rows in this. So I did, what, three rows? And then I could do a couple rows, my next couple rows, in double crochet. So remember that when you're, whatever you're doing, you don't have to do the whole thing in one stitch. You can bury it. You can... Say next week, let's say we do the popcorn stuff next week. So I don't think we're gonna we're gonna attempt that. Maybe I'm gonna leave that for a little bit later. So let's say we did that. So we do a couple rows in this, and then we could do a row or two or three or whatever, a popcorn stitch, and then come back to this. So you can mix 
mix your stitches just like you can mix your singles and your doubles and your triples it it kind of does speaking of circles later on maybe again later probably about a month or so later on this month or early into february there are, in this book there is some let me i got it i don't want to miss misquote they have a stitch called they call a hexagon and it kind of looks like a hexagon but it is circular but they also have one it's a very very popular stitch it's been around forever it's called the catherine wheel and I've never actually done a Catherine wheel. I've seen it done, but I'm sure that I can learn how to do it. I mean, all these complex stitches are basic stitches just put together. But I don't know how if it's going to show up. Again, I don't want to show too much of the, of the book. But that's the Catherine wheel. So they're kind of circles, but the rows interlock with each other. That's like a classic... Um, Crochet, crochet sti uh, um, advanced stitch. It's a very popular stitch. And it looks good when you alternate colors. And you could do all... If I wanted to, I could do the Catherine wheel stitch for a temperature blanket. You'd have to figure out the math. and It's a much taller stitch, so I wouldn't do it a whole year. So we're at the end of the row, chain two, flip, and again, skip one, do two, skip one, and do two. I'm going to do a few more rows and then... Compare it to the gray sample I have. I have a question. Um, would anybody be interested in learning? And I touched on it before with basic stitches like weeks and weeks ago. I don't know if anybody saw it, but I had a video on increasing and decreasing. Would anybody be interested in, it's an actual stitch of the, and there's different variations of it, of a chevron or zigzag stitch. That involves a lot of increasing and decreasing. It's actually kind of simple. It's just the hard part is increasing and decreasing, which really isn't that difficult. Okay. That, that stitch works really good when you switch colors. I mean, any any of these stitches can work good if you switch colors. But again, it's it's up, down, up, down, up. It's a, it's a zigzag. They also have a wave one. Which I've done. I've done both. What I'm going to do here is that I'm going to finish this row and then the next row, I'm going to add a little variation to this. And I'm going to see how it turns out. Quickly get to the end of this row. And I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera. Again, 
if you're having trouble seeing any of this, let me know and I can stop periodically. So we're at the end of the row, skip one and then last single crochet, do two. Okay, this next row, we're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna chain two. We're doing the same alternate stitch. It's just, I gotta look at this. We're gonna do back loop only. So, you hold it up like this where you see the edge and you see those V's. You've got two loops. You've got the one closest to you and the one furthest away. So, we're skipping the first one. And then the second. So, here's the first one. It's not really showing up because it's kind of twisted a bit. So, there's the first single crochet. And here's the second. We're only going to go through that back loop. But we're still going to do two. So we're going to go in, and it's kind of difficult and a little tight like this. Let's see if we could do this. Let's see if this will work. This might not work with this type of stitch. It should because it's just single crochet. Okay. It's just a little tight. So what I'm doing is on the second one, instead of going into, into the front of the stitch, I'm gonna pick up just the back loop and do a single and then do another single in that same back loop. Skip and then the next one, do two singles in the back loop of it. So you're not going, again, this might not work, work right, but we'll see if it looks horrible, it looks horrible, we can rip it out. So we're only going in the back loop, not the front and the back. So skip the next one. I gotta show the camera. So right where my fingers are here, the back loop only. One, two, and you just continue. So we'll see when we get to the end, if this is actually going to look decent. If not, we try. We're experimenting. So how, that's how they came up with all these different unique stitches. It's a little difficult. It's a little tight, but... Okay, we're at the end here. Go through this. I'm gonna do one more row of regular alternate stitch. So we're gonna flip and we're gonna do the regular in through both loops like you normally would do a regular single crochet. And when I get to the end, I'll show you what that's gonna look like. I have done Tunisian crochet before. I have um, a couple Tunisian hooks. I've never done corner to corner. I've tried and I have to practice more with it. I've, I've started it and it looked kind of weird. But yeah, I definitely want to try that. But I have done Tunisian. Okay, so this row, and that's it's actually, thank you for suggesting that. Because maybe that's what I could actually do one of these uh, streams is definitely do Tunisian. 
I have their ba a set of hooks. They're bamboo, but they're double-ended. And there's a special stitch technique that you need the, t the two. And you, you, you do it from one end, and you do this, and then you use the other end. And so i got to relearn how to use those. Okay, so we just... We did a bunch of the alternate stitches, and then we did that one row we only in the back, and then this row we just did was a regular alternate stitch. So if we flip it over, this is the back, this would be the quote unquote back side of the work. So when we flip it over, I don't know how well it's showing up, but can you see like right here, there's like a line that looks a little different. I don't think it's really showing, it, this would be a good, stitch to do that and also I think the, the pink yarn isn't really showing it off that well but when and this isn't just for this alternate stitch it could be done on regular single crochet it could be done double I think it works better on double where you only go in the back stitch and it forms a ridge like you can actually fold it like it wants to fold right there on there so it can be a, de a, a design feature where you add that decorative ridge. That was just something I was trying out. It kind of does look like arrows. So I was just experimenting. That part right there was not in the book. That is just a, a back loop only. Yep, you can do Tunisian crochet with regular hooks the problem is if you're going to do a wide piece you need a longer hook not the handle part but the shaft of the hook because it's kind of Tunisian crochet is kind of like a combination of crochet and knitting because with knitting you got your this is actually a double ended knitting needle so you would knit and you would you with knitting you're taking imagine there's another knitting needle which i have knitting needles but i'm not getting up to do that and you've got all your loops on one and you're knitting and you're transferring them all from one hook from one needle to the other so at all times with knitting until you're done you always have loops on a needle if your needle comes out there's a chance that your whole knitting can come apart Unlike crochet, you take your hook out and you're good. But with Tun Tunisian crochet, is it's got a hook on the end, but it's long like a knitting needle, and you do a bunch of stitches and all, and you would pick all, all of them up. So you'd have all of these, like there's 20, you'd have 20 loops on your, your Tunisian crochet hook, and then when you get to the, you'd start here and you do what you need to do, and when you get, Yes, so yeah, a lot. And then when you get here, it's this this process you do. You're basically yarning over and going through two, and yarning over. You're taking them off one by one. So you need all that room to hold the hooks. You can do it with a regular crochet hook. It's going to be a very narrow piece of fabric. So if you wanted to do like a um, like edging. If you wanted to make edgings for a blanket, you do it separately and then attach it, you could do it that way. But you would have to do very narrow rows. Yeah, I'll have to find... I have them right here. Didn't even know I had this. Oh, okay. There's a good example. That was cool to have it in hand. This here, that's a Tunisian crochet hook. I don't know why it's called Tunisian. I don't know if it comes from Tunisia or they named it for whatever reason. So you could see here, a regular hook, you're only having a short amount of loops on the hook. So let's say you're doing a triple, you're only having a maximum of four loops. And you, you do a stitch and you're done, you go to the next one. With Tunisian, you need all this length to hold it. But 
if you have a Tunisian hook, you could do regular crochet with a Tunisian hook. You'd hold it like this, like a knitting needle, and proceed. But that's for another day. <laughs> but definitely. And when with Tunisia and cro crochet, the stitch that sh the main stitch that you would make, it's called, I think it's called an Afghan stitch, I think. I could be wrong. And it has a look that when you look at it, it's like that kind of looks like crochet and it kind of looks like knitting. It's. It's the way it, the stitches are formed. So again, we're going to go back to the alternate stitch. Oops, zoomed out. Zoomed in too much. Talking a lot, so my mouth is getting dry. So we're going to proceed. We're not going to do the back loop in this. We're just going to do regular ones. Or... It's, or if anybody has a preference, would you like me to do a totally different stitch? Now oh, first, before I get ahead of myself, that's our original sample of our alternate stitch in the gray. And that is the same, exact same thing, but in the pink. I think in the pink, you can pick up a little bit more of the stitch definition. going to lose my my loops so we can move on to another stitch which I don't have a sample of yet but I can look one up real quick and don't want to have anything that's too complicated and I need something that I could work continue on with this um, Let me take a look. I know what I can do. We're going to go a little bit back to basics. But I'm going to, I need to find another color to go with this pink. I know what we can do. Find something that's suitable that I have enough of. Got a big bag of yarn sitting next to me. Novelty yarn, I don't want to use. Hold on a second. Okay, so we're going to use some white. This is in a ball. I didn't have time to make it into a cake. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do a very simple, basic, alternating, not alternating. I don't know what they call this. I don't know if there's a name for it. But what we're going to do is we've got 20, so let me see how we're gonna do this. I gotta do a little quick math in my head.
Okay. Hush. So what we're going to do is we're going to vary the heights in the stitches. We're using the basic stitches, singles, half doubles, doubles and triples. And it's going to form like a wave kind of. So we're going to chain one, flip. And we're not doing every other one. This is a totally different stitch. This has nothing to do with the alternate stitch. I was just getting tired of doing this alternate stitch, which I like it, but you can only do it so for so long explaining how to do every other one. So we're gonna stitch into every stitch, all 20 of them. So in the first one, we're doing a single crochet. Let me zoom in and let's rip that out and start over. So in the first one, we'll do a single. And in the next one, we're going to do a half double. So we're going to wrap and then go through all three, like a half double. The next one, we're going to do a double. So wrap, go through. And I don't need to explain double if you're a crocheter. And if I need to, if you, if I do, um, if you do need it explained, I can. So you wrap, you yarn over, go through two, and yarn over through the last two. So we did a single, a half double, and then a double, and let's do a triple. So you're going to wrap twice, go through two, go through two, and go through two. So we went up. Now the next one, we're going to do a double. And this is just a pattern I'm coming up with on my own. I've seen it done in other things, but I'm not following a specific book. Okay, I wasn't explaining what I was doing. So I did a single, a half double, a double, a triple, a double, a half double, and a single. So you're, incre you're making the stitches taller as you go up and then you're gonna go down. So we just did a half double, and now we're gonna do a single. And now we're gonna go up again. So you're like going up and down a hill. So we're gonna do a half double, and now a double, and now a triple. And now a double. And now a half double. And then a single. Repeat the pattern. So we just did a single, now we're gonna do a half double. A double. And a triple. And now we're going down the hill. A double. And this might not work out evenly with the numbers of variations of stitches, but we'll see what we get. So that was a double. Now we get a half double. And now we get a single. And we have one stitch left. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna fudge it. Because I don't want to end up doing a half double and it being weird in the end. I wanna stop with a single. So we're just gonna go into that stitch and we're gonna slip stitch, so we're, we're decreasing. So we decrease by one. So what we did is we just made that wave. That alone would be great for an edging on a blanket. But now we're gonna change colors and actually, before we change colors, I need to take that slip stitch out because I need to change the color. So we're back to where we were. Now we're going to slip stitch. So we're going to bring it through. And before we complete it, because that's where this white yarn is going to come in. Pick it up. Bring it through to 
finish off the join clip it so we ended with a with a ignore the slip stitch because we just decreased but in our pattern we ended with a single so now to go on top of that we're going to put damn it save Do that right? Single, half double, double, triple. Okay, so we're gonna do it opposite. So now we're gonna put a triple on it. And I know this might be a little confusing. So we want a triple. So to triple, we need to chain four. Four, flip, get my tails up in there, and in that stitch, not the slip, but so there was our triple from the previous row, our double, our half double, and here is our single. So we're going to go do a triple into the single from below. If this is making sense to anyone, if I've confused you, let me know. So we just did a triple into the single. Now we're going to do a double into the half double. Back the half double. Okay. Now we're going to do a half double into the double. Basically, I'm making a wave pattern, interlocking waves. And then into this triple, again, I need to get this on camera. So this is our triple. We're going to just do a single. So the highest stitch the tallest stitch is going to have stitched into it the shortest and vice versa. So you're alternating. So that was our single. And now the next one will be a half double. Let me move those tails out of the way. And this is just something I'm coming up with on my own. So that's a half double. And now we're going to do a double. Oops. I caught the wrong loop. We're going to do a double, and then in this single, that's a single crochet right there from the previous row, we're going to do a triple. And I'll show you what this is going to look like when we get there. So that was a triple, and now we need to do a double into the next stitch. We need to do a half double in the next one. Okay. I'll catch you later. And then the top of this one, we're going to do a single. So now we're going to do a half double into this one. And then we're going to do a double into this one. And then we're going to do a triple. And so on. So now we're going to do a double, and I'm I'm nearing the end of the row, and I'll show you what this is what this will look like. Oh, I did did this, the wrong stitch. So now we're going to do a half double here, and then this here we're going to do a single. And now we do a half double in the next one. We're going to do a double. And then we're going to do a triple in the last stitch. So, I don't know how well this is going to show up. So this form, this hill, this wave pattern, and then the, 
these stitches are filling in, but they also kind of, I might have messed up on that stitch. They're also forming a wave pattern of themselves. So they'll be like interlocking interlocking waves. So they're just gonna they're gonna go like this. But they interlock. That's just something I was playing around with. To see what it would look like. So that was our stitch tonight. We did our alternate stitch. Which is a pretty cool looking stitch. I think that's gonna be it for tonight. Um, let me click over to this screen. Um, if you want, make certain you follow. If you want to, tell your friends. Um, I'll be on Saturday night. Saturday is our my wild card or gadget night. And I still don't know what I'm going to do, but I got a two days to figure that out. Um, if you want, check out my socials, mainly YouTube, which is linked down below. I think it's in the about section. And I uh, hope you all have a good evening. And I will see you on Saturday.